Hey and welcome to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide. Now if this is your first time watching any of these videos then I'd ask for a minute or so of your time just so I can explain how to use this guide and what it's about. Essentially this guide is entirely complete and it will help you get a full platinum for Sekiro. It covers all NPC quests that are relevant, all items, a best path through the game and also specifically strategies to get you through the game with the path of least resistance. Remember that this guide is supposed to be used as a full guide but you, could, you can use it for specific areas if you need to but if you're confused about how you know we are at a certain point or doing a certain thing, chances are the answer is in a previous episode. When it comes to boss battles, we really only show you the easiest method that we could find based on our perspective. If you want to fight the boss differently, it's up to you in this case to find a different and harder strategy. Now, if you have a good tip or have a question, leave them in the comments and I'll add them to a pinned post. That way this guide can constantly get better or more efficient. So if you have a question, check the pinned post first. If you do have a tip, please leave a timestamp so I can find the bit that you're talking about. Also, please bear in mind that this guide is taking me literally hundreds of hours to make, so if you enjoyed the video, the least you could do is give it a like. If you really enjoyed it, perhaps give us a sub! And if you really, really enjoyed it, you can support the channel on our Patreon if you're feeling generous, or perhaps sub to us on our Twitch, that's another good option. Now on to the guide. Alright, so welcome back to Episode 2 of Sekiro The Ultimate Guide. So this literally takes off exactly where the last part ended. So as we can see, we are in the temple and this is the sculptor guy. Now this guy, um, he's given you your prosthetic arm. You can talk to him for a little bit of lore or whatever, but we're just gonna ignore that. This is Emma. So Emma gives you your healing gourd. No, she doesn't give you, she, so she doesn't give you, but she upgrades your healing gourd rather. Um, so you bring gourd seeds to her. There's 10 in the game overall. And uh, we are going to get eight of them before Genichiro. Um, and that's good because we become relevant. You're going to realise well, that's a really good thing. So you can come back here and get a coin purse or whatever. Um, in that corner over there to the right, just in front of uh, this pellet, um, there's an NPC that shows up that sells you some stuff. He sells you a healing gourd. Now, this guy's pretty cool. Um, essentially, he's like an undiable, unkillable NPC. And you can use him to practice your parries on. Uh, like we said in the last episode, parries are extremely important in this game. If you've come in from Dark Souls, learn to parry. No, learn to deflect. Because they're called deflects in right, this game. Say, learn to deflect, rather. Essentially, you time L1 with their hits. But if you're going to tell them to change their playstyles, you need to change the terminology to help them as well. Yeah, good point, actually, <laughs> yeah. So learn to deflect. It's extremely, extremely important. If you think... Right, here's the thing. If you think that you can't deflect a big attack from an enemy, because in Dark Souls, you, you know, you couldn't even block it, you just have to dodge it, you can block and deflect every attack in this game. Unless it has the little, like, red, like, kanji symbol that pops up telling you that you can't do that. Yeah. That's the only time. In which case, you can probably make the counter. So, essentially, he allows you to um, practice techniques and stuff. If you learn a new technique, you can come and practice it on him. Now, this is the offering box. If an NPC sells you an item and then they die, uh, their item then becomes available in that box for a higher price. It's, just, it's There's a similar thing in Dark Souls 2 or 3. I can't remember what thing it was. Basically, none of the NPC shops, like, matter because yeah. they all end up there. Um, essentially, uh, to make a point though, it's, n it's not really relevant in this particular guide. It's just something that is th the case. Yeah, um, don't worry if you kill an NPC that you think's important. If they're a merchant, their, their store will probably be there somewhere. So, here we are in the first area, Ashna Outskirts. This is the first uh, bonfire or idol, essentially. Um, I quite like the bonfire placement in this game. There's a lot of them. Um, it doesn't really feel like you have to, you know, backtrack through areas too much. Yeah, and now that you have the addition of the uh, the grappling hook, you guys should probably play around with that a little bit as well and get used to the movement of that. You can spam it as much as you like. Yep. Fly around to your heart's content. So here what you can do, um, like, stealth kills in this game, as you've seen in the last part. Wait for that red glow, by yeah, the way. Yeah. Wait for that, because if you don't and you hit R1 when it's not there, you'll just swing your katana in the air and then you'll fall. So pick up the pellet and pick up the ceramic shard. Now what you can do here is you can also do like corner kills. Um, initially the first playthrough I corner killed that guy but actually that's not efficient because you can just backstab him later and it doesn't cost you an item. So you can cling up uh, on this ledge here, right? So again, uh, we do want to try and stealth these areas as much as possible which just reduces a uh, headache. So essentially you could have risked climbing up this ledge here and running up behind them but I, I didn't know when he stopped at the edge. So I could have went to run up behind him and then he turns before I get to him. So that's why I'm just waiting. 
just better be careful, Many you know? Many sounds the alarm. Exactly, exactly. Even though it doesn't matter, because uh, you can just kill enemies by just mashing R1 on them. Especially these enemies in the early game, but... And you, get just... a, you get abilities later on in the game where you just don't even have to crouch anymore, you just walk right up behind them. You can sprint right up behind them. It's true. So same thing here, I was just waiting for him to turn his back. Now, another part of this guide as well um, is that I don't pick up any items. Now, if, I, if, I, if you kill an enemy, you hold in square to suck up their golden items. I don't do that in this guide, just like the other guides, we don't pick up any NP like NPC drops because essentially they're random, so I could get to a point in a game where I've picked up an item that's useful that you've not picked up and essentially this guide completely like mitigates any variance from like picking up items. So you pick them up and it's going to make your game a lot easier than what this particular guide shows because you're going to have a surplus of gold and stuff. This is just showing you absolute worst case scenario, so just bear that in mind. So there's an item down here which is kind of no, hidden. What worst case scenario would also have dragon rot in it being incurable, but then again it doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> so you can jump up back here, this gets you just uh, back to that corner we're hiding at. And um, so this is how you kill that guy that said that you could like corner kill. And um, we're going to show you how to corner kill um, just in like a second where we kill another guy, but quickly. Uh, so see, as you can see you can like kill, you can backstab a guy from kind of their side as well. Now, to make a point as well, if you if you jumped and dropped attack that guy, a drop attack causes noise and that guy would have turned around and heard you. But if you drop down and backstab them, it doesn't cause any noise. Now, if you time this correctly, you can just straight up like corner kill this guy. <laughs> just chilling right next to him. So essentially, you, you hold your back up against the wall and if you lean all the way to the edge of the wall and there at the corner, you can press R1 to just straight up backstab them. Right, or rather, you grab them and kill them. It's, it's kind of like a backstab, but not really. So if you're crouched in these plants, you'll stay completely hidden, which you want to be because of this guy here. You can, you can crouch, come all the way around behind him, and then use a backstab. And this guy inexplicably can't see you. I mean, I'd have seen him in real life. He has a Metal Gear Solid view cone, it's fine. Literally, literally. But that's how you get past uh, this area without being seen. Now, if you were to uncrouch from the grass, both of those guys would have seen you. Called the alarm, there's a bunch of dogs, they'd have come and uh, attacked you as well. You don't want that, so you want to remain hidden in this area. Again, this guide is focused on new players. So this is good advice for new players. This isn't just, the, you know, if you know what you're doing, here's just a guide to get everything. This is, again, you like... You want to learn to walk before you can run, sonny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Actually, I think that's a really good way of describing it. You need to learn to walk before you can run, and that's what this guide is. So if you jump up here, you can see the patrol of the dogs. Um... It's quite hard to do this bit without the dog seeing you whatsoever, but when that dog turns its back, you can jump behind it into the grass, and then it'll only be, like, yellow alerted, so it means it's, like, they're suspicious, but they're not, like... They, they still think it's their imagination, though. Yeah. So you can wait for this dog to pass. Um, ultimately, this doesn't matter, and you'll see why, because you can repel up to the bit where the idol is, and then the dogs can't get to you anyway, and there's no other enemies to be alerted around here. But I'm just going to quickly, uh, when this dog is... Uh, past get the ceramic shard and then come up here and as you see i got a letter there but it doesn't matter we're right at the idol and this is just more like a, a general technique rather than this needing to do this for this part this is more just like good practice um for like how for the rest move, of the game how yeah. to move throughout an area when there's still enemies to take down and stuff like that so that you don't get the alarm bells ringing and then swarmed and aye it's particularly bad in the early game when you don't have makiri counter so, um, what I've done there is I went in and got the shuriken prosthetic and then used the, um, the, the, the idol, the, the little homeward idol or whatever the fuck it's called, and to just take me back to the, um, the temple. So you come here, talk to the sculptor, and then fit the prosthetic tool, put the loaded shuriken on, uh, even though there's, I don't know why you can't just do this, why do you need to come in for he has the screwdriver. <laughs> You've only got a sword. <laughs> <laughs> you could use the tip. It's like using a butter knife to first screwdriver. Nah, nah. So we're going to go back, uh, use the teleport ability from the idol, come back to here, and uh, onwards we go. But except now we've got the shuriken prosthetic, which allow which is going to be useful for the boss coming up. Or the mini boss, rather. So come here, get the pellet, that's some healing items, and then you can crouch around here and um, just go down these like kind of stepped cliffs. So yeah, it sort of leads you this way. So what you do is you, you want to hug this as tightly as possible, get the Fistful of Ash, which is useful, again, for the guy we're about to beat. As you can see, there's like a little suspicion meter from the mini-boss, but as long as you're crouched and you do it quick enough, he won't see you. Just hug that wall as tightly as possible so you don't get into his, like, range of vision too much. 
and then you want to crouch around this area and this is how you backstab this guy to take an L, like to take a bar of his health away. Yeah, it's, it's the, uh, another example of how to traverse throughout the map and deal yeah. with these generals and stuff. Now, um, if you're new to the game, this guy can be really quite difficult. This guy will be the first one, I think, in the game as well to introduce you to their, like, posture restoring move as well. Yeah. Which is what the shuriken arm is very good at stopping. Um, if you ever see them, like, stand and, like, uh, take, like, a battle stance sort of deal, they're about to reset their posture and you can knock them out of that by using the shuriken. So this guy does a lot of horizontal sweeping attacks and then that um, that symbol will come up, like here. So what you can do is you can just jump and if you jump and like time a jump when you're at his head, you'll jump off him, that'll increase his posture meter, which allows you to get the get the, the, the kill on him. So as you can see here, that. Yeah, so this is the thing, like I didn't do it because I just wanted to like show you how like kind of easy this guy can be if you just take your time. Um, using this guy is like practice for deflection and stuff. I would honestly recommend doing it at this point. This guy is right next to a bonfire, there's like zero stakes, just take your time and get good at defeating this guy, and that's going to make your life a hell of a lot fucking easier. He also doesn't have any unblockable thrusting attacks, which means you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. All his unblockables are sweeps, so you can get your practice in for jumps instead of a uh, Makiri counter at this point. So you can like deflect, or rather you can hit him out of his attacks if you're quite aggressive. Essentially, you can get like one, two, maybe three hits in, and then the next hit after that, you're not going to be able to do, so you can probably just prepare for a, a deflection after that. So we got a Gourd Seed, which is important. We're just going to use that immediately and go straight back to uh, the, the temple. Yeah, and we're key gonna... items like that will automatically go into your inventory. You don't have to pick them up if they come yeah. from an enemy, so you don't have to worry about missing anything like that or a prayer bead if it's a drop or something. There's actually one item in the game that is a drop that you need to suck up from the guy, um, but that's the, oh, there's like two, and that there's only like two instances in the whole game where they drop a ascent. It doesn't go straight to your inventory, which is interesting, I think. Hmm. Uh, there's like a monk in the next area that drops like a thousand gold and unless you suck it up from them, you don't get it. Oh, like the soul packet sort of deal. Yeah, yeah. Right, I see. So we're just coming back here um, and essentially this next area is, this is like how you stealth this area. Uh, this area is quite difficult. Take your time and if you fuck it up, it doesn't really matter. You can just kind of mash your way through killing most of these guys. However, if you get uh, surrounded it can be quite of an issue. Yeah, if one of those big naked ladies with a hammer appears and you're surrounded as well, it's good. just run and reset. So, again, drop down, don't drop attack. Drop down and then backstab because that is quiet. And then you just want to kill that guy and then repel back up here because that's like... He ends up becoming an issue and he spots you later on, but you can just get rid of him quickly. Uh, it's just kind of we're getting rid of like the tertiary guys that can like spot you if you just ran into the middle, essentially. Yeah. Pick them off on the outskirts and then work your way into the middle and eventually there'll only be two or three guys left for you to fight. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it actually. Um, so, as you'll see here, there's like a patrol of guys uh, coming and they're a right pain in the ass. Right pain I in the ass. I don't like that Wolf is able to abuse third person peak. Because he's not looking around the corner but he can see those guys. <laughs> He's got a third person camera. More than, any, more than anything that I don't like is that this particular patrol of guys, it's... The patrols are like, they are fixed, but they're also like semi-random. There's like two guys walking and then one guy walking behind them. This guy here, right? Now the problem is, is that sometimes they'll get clumped up together and then sometimes they don't. And I don't understand why that is. It might just be a difference in how long they sit idle on certain points of their path and then when they overlap on their second lap they just get it's stuck together and then they'll split again. I've tried this, it's different every time. Sometimes they'll come around that corner as three of, sometimes it'll be like a two and a one of. It, it, it's fucking weird. So this guy here, right, you actually need to kill him quite quickly. Use your uh, uh, shuriken, it just, you want to time it evenly and then you kill this guy using the shuriken and then you want to just stay back because this guy gets alerted but then we're just going to wait until his, uh, his alert wears off. Um, because you really don't want to get alerted from these guys. Now, something to bear in mind, however, is if you do get alerted, you can just quit out the game and load back in, and you'll be exactly where you were, for the most part, 
and except all the enemies aggro will have been um, cut off. So that is something that we do abuse in this game. Good old From Software yeah. games. Yeah. Um, but that is just something to bear in mind that you can indeed do. It's not a From Software game. If the door opens from this side and you can't abuse a quick reload, <laughs> that's pretty much the rule of it. So what we do now is we need to quickly... You need to quickly backstab this guy because... Um, and again, you can backstab people from like the side a little bit. Uh, because if you knock over the wood, it will alert him and then he'll turn around. If you come then off the side of this bit, that's what triggers this guy's patrol. You want to, you'd want to backstab this guy... And you need to make sure you come around here when the patrol that you, that passed you, like down there, is like far, like they've went down those stairs on the other side. So now we're gonna clean up the last of the guys. I think I kind of fucked this up a little bit, um, but I just wanted to like kind of highlight how at you this can fuck point, up. At this point, enough of the uh, like perimeter has been dealt with that you can get a little bit more reckless and go, like, yeah, yeah, a little bit more ham on these guys and yeah. Start learning how to deal with groups of enemies. So as you can see, the patrol is split up quite um, quite widely at this part, despite the fact that sometimes it can be clumped together as like the group of three or potentially four. I, I can't quite remember how many people are like patrolling. They're not stopped. Okay, cool. It's done. Sorry that the screen went down there. And... Okay, cool. We're good. So um, what we do here is I fucked up getting the drop attack on him. Uh, realistically, you should just drop down and backstab him. Don't fuck up like I did. Don't try to get the drop. Drop down and backstab. It's always the safer option. So now I'm just going to jump into this building and um, uh, as the patrol is like passed, you can see them there. Uh, again, I uh, fucked this up royally, which is quite bad, but what you should be doing Instead of fucking up the drop attack, drop down and uh, backstab the guy from behind the the patrol. Uh, again, I just wanted to show you that you can fuck it up. So don't like, don't go doing what I done, essentially. Yeah, so first episode, do what we do. Second episode, don't. <laughs> <laughs> I just hope that I'm explaining it well enough that instead of uh, dying like this, it just makes more sense to, um... It just makes more sense... Hold on. You didn't die. No, you didn't die. Oh, sure. now you're going through the, the thing. Yeah, 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 good point. Right, okay, so actually this is why I kept this in, because it highlights this part. This is the first time that I died. Sorry, yeah, you're, you're right, didn't I didn't die. Didn't even make it to the Genichiro fight. Um, so yeah, I know, right. <laughs> uh, this was the first time that I died, so you get your, like, one resurrection. Which is why this was like okay to leave in because it highlights this part. Uh, I think later on I might actually show you doing this another clip where I do it properly, but um, yeah. So the pro so there's four people that are patrolling, and it's a bit of an issue. That guy that's got the kind of like ghillie suit. Yeah, he's like a little bit harder than the other enemies. So that was the, the logic was I can just drop attack him, but as you can see, it's risky doing that. So don't bother. Just sneak up behind everybody individually on the patrol and backstab them. Um, if you're able to do that, you'd only have to fight two guys, which is a lot easier than fighting three guys. Also, in groups, Fistful of Ashes is also very handy. Th like, lock onto a guy who's behind the, the, the one right in front of you. Hit him with a Fistful of Ashes and then spam on the guy in front of you, because then the guy who's reinforcing him can't do anything. Yeah, yeah. So, there's a cool thing here where... Um, essentially we need to get the firecracker and the, and that's one of your prosthetic tools and I didn't want to like, you know, suck in any gold because that was part of the whole thing. This area gives you exactly enough gold that you need to buy the firecracker immediately, so that's pretty good. It's almost like it was intended. Uh, it's not the only area that you can get the firecracker from either. This is true, but you want to get it right now. This so, is the earliest point in the game that you can get your second prosthetic tool. So speak to that woman there and she will give you the bell that allows you to go to Hirata Estate. Um, I wonder how many people miss this on their first go of the game, but ultimately... Um, no, you couldn't miss her at an estate. It's an entire area, and two prosthetic tools, three prosthetic tools, or something like that. Yeah, absolutely, you need to do it. But I think there's people that have done the game, and they've been like, where is this area if they're doing it without a guide? So you repel up to the top of this little mountain area, and then you sell your five coin purses to them, and then that allows you exactly enough gold to get the... Um, Robel's firecrackers. Aye. Because they're not called Robert in this game. They're called Roberta! <laughs> Is it? Yeah. See if you play it in Japanese. 
and you <laughs> kick that Iron Knight off the bridge, he screams Roberta. Oh, shit. <laughs> So we're going to idle back or use a little charm thing to come back here and install the firecracker because that's extremely important for the entire rest of the game and at this point he'll also give you the um, the upgrade text for uh, getting upgrades. Yep. Obviously, I mean... Now that you've collected two random objects, you are fit to learn the arts of the shinobi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and again... Um, the firecracker, by the way, if you're ever surrounded by mobs, is a fantastic go-to to just instantly stagger all of them and jump away. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a perfect panic button. As you can see here, here's the skills tree. Uh, we don't actually buy any, um, or I think we might get whirlwind slash. No, I think the first thing we're gonna get will probably be Mikiri counter. <laughs> well, I think we get we get both of them at the same time. Not as much. We get Mikiri yeah. counter and whirlwind slash. So, that is a cost to the death that you have there. When you were on that skill book, you seen that we had one skill point available and a little blue bar was building. When you die, that blue bar empties, but you don't lose skill points that you've already accrued. Yeah. So you'll earn one when that bar fills up, and you earn those by deflecting, fighting enemies, blah blah, the usual play the game stuff. So if you jump down here, you get a really hidden item. It's a bundled Jizu statue. statue. Essentially, we want to keep all these sorts of items, and that's a Gatchin Sugar, which is another... It kind of makes you invisible which is an incredibly useful item. The Jizo statue restores one of your resurrection points, your which, resurrection tokens at the Which essentially the gives you a free half health bar, if you look at it yeah. that way. So you also want to sneak up this side, right? So as an example, right, you'll see when we when we sneak up here and we backstab this guy, again, just do what we do, but that uh, gate over there is in front of the uh, old woman that gave us the bell. Now, we don't want to come up from that way, because it's such a pain in the arse. There's two guys that are in front of you, along with that cannon guy, that's really horrible, does tons of damage so you can kill you easily. But if you take that secret kind of back route that we took there, completely skips all that, and then it's just not an issue. So you want to jump down here as opposed to use that repel point, because if you use that repel point, it just repels you into nothing and you die. Um, you want you have to jump over here and then use the repel point this way. Because if... <laughs> uh, did you guys notice the uh, that ominous massive snake skin hanging off the tree as well? Um, I, I didn't notice that, Did actually. you not no. notice it? Wow, it's just kind of there. So you can uh, come this way, like from like up above or whatever, but it ultimately just does, doesn't uh, really matter. Just do this way. This gets you all the, the items and yeah. There's and like two forks, uh, two forked paths basically that you can take in this area, where there's the straight line where you have to go through the cannon guy and all the minions and that, or you can take like go around the outside and then cut through the middle and go around the outside for the other half as well. Yeah. So we jump over here, kill this uh, chicken, I suppose, and then this, this uh, is CBC. So this is one of the NPCs that has a semi-relevant quest. Yeah, so this is me just showing you that you can like come. F there's the cannon guy, and you can just kind of walk up this way as opposed to repelling around there. But essentially, this guy has got an actually relevant quest somewhat. Um, speak to him just now, and then like you can for ten gold, which you have. I, I don't have it because I wasn't sucking up any gold, but you just. Use the 10 gold, exhaust his dialogue or whatever. Um, it also, it doesn't matter if you do it or not, but if you... There's an interesting thing where if you don't take his advice and then you come back and get the item that he tells you to get, he then gives you an oil for free as well. But it's also it's such a, 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 a nothing gift that it, it just doesn't matter. None of the... All the NPC quest lines are nothing gifts. In because they don't give you key or unique items. They just give you consumables, nope. which you can just buy or farm anyway, so it doesn't matter. And that is part one of the Skiro Guide. No, that's part two. No, the first one, part's part zero. This is part one. Oh. Yeah. Well, fine then. So this is part... Depend, depend on your perspective. And the next part is Harata Estate. So uh, stay tuned for that. Wow. Well, yeah. If, unless you missed it somehow. 